Hi, I'm Jim. Uh, yeah, and I'm here to talk about um, design, so not, not very technical <laughs> in this, this next talk. Uh, but it's about how people use things. In particular, how do you, you know, what's the user experience of a decentralized cloud database? Um, and yeah, a bit about me. Uh, I actually come from a family of programmers, but I'm not one myself. <laughs> Um, and I ended up in art school and doing various design degrees. Um, and I've worked in everything from startups to government and everything in between, really. Um, yeah, and what I'm here to talk about is, is how do you design for data and developers using data, I guess you could say. Um, so how to design for people who build things, which is likely all of you, um, or many of you. Uh, and yeah, textile, uh, what we do is we're doing that pretty much. <laughs> Uh, accelerating the exchange of uh, information across society. And it kind of boils down to ownership building blocks. So again, we're talking about data and we're talking about data building blocks. And, oops, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, and well, we started with uh, a thing called ThreadDB, uh, which is a multi-party database uh, built on IPFS and libp2p, and built this thing alongside it for, called Buckets for Storage. And then after that, kind of as a proof of concept, I guess you could say, we built uh, textile photos a number of years ago, as, um, in which might have been one of the first apps to, to use IPFS. And then now we've built Tableland to further this idea of these decentralized data and those, those ownership building blocks. Um, and it might seem really basic to many here today, but for the sake of myself and other non-developers, if there's any around, um, here's the simplified version. Uh, I like that one in particular, that it's for structure, storage is for whatever, but, and I understand that there's a lot of probably edge cases, you know, like tables, you can, you don't necessarily need tables, but because it's table land, we're gonna talk about tables. Um, and yeah, data, we all know why this is important, why we're all here, really. Um, it's how we live our lives, it's the fundamentals of everything at this point. Um, yeah, so what is Tableland exactly? Um, right, uh, it's the read, write, and own database, and it's the, all of this what it says on the tin, really. Um, yeah, it's, you can uh, read and write to it from various means, also Studio, which we're gonna talk about, and it's all stored on the, decentral, or the, the decentralized network of your choice. And it's uh, open source, permissionless, and uh, database. Um, Right, in Studio is the latest development of this, which is a web application that lets you do all that. So you no longer need just a CLI or to build your own app to do that. And this is how you can use Tableland. And of course, Tableland Studio is built in Tableland and vice versa. So, and yeah, I just need to specify that when, yeah, we're talking about um, decentralized database that this is the user experience of that and not, not any sort of the technical f foundations of that. And yeah, so I'm a designer, so often the design process uh, takes something, it goes something like this roughly, and this is the double diamond process as defined by the UK Design Council. It's a great framework, but um, yeah, fairly rigid, sometimes unrealistic, one could say. Um, and the real world doesn't quite work that way, especially here at Textile, we often work in like really tight loops. <laughs> uh, often we deliver is how we define things, we're always shipping, that sort of thing. And I guess this design process of what I'm about to show you is kind of flipping back and forth and there's a bit of attention to them. So, um, and here's where it all really started, just trying to map out everything, get it all on paper, sketching out what happens and trying to get to, um, you know, what, what somebody, well, you can't really see it there, uh, what a user is gonna be seeing. And kind of to go through this kind of user-centered design process, you know, we kind of had to start with some assumptions, what you could say, and a hypothesis or hypotheses. Um, things like teams and projects, everybody gets that. Um, tables, you should know that probably. <laughs> um, users, you know, they'll, they'll need templates and this one will come back to bite us uh, later on. And, and having helpful explanatory text, all this thing, environments, you can get that. These are, these are dev tools, you'll understand these sort of terms. You want multiple deployment actions, all these sorts of things. So we made all these hunches, really bets, you know, and then we started talking to users. And I should note that we, we did some rounds of user research, but we're always talking to, you know, developers in the community, we're doing hackathons, all things are coming in from multiple angles. Really, and so f for the first round, you know, we're just looking at kind of table stakes, really, you know? They can import data, this is a huge thing, because ultimately we want people to put stuff into Tableland, right? And uh, CLI, that came up huge, because this is uh, a fundamental part of the developer experience. And then UI basics, right? They need to be able to putter around and 
figure out what to do fairly easily. Um, and yeah, okay, I'm not coming up terribly well, but anyways, uh, we, so we came up with three user journeys uh, to test in the first round that we, we want to get the person in there. They have a default team created for them. They're going to create a project. They're going to create a table. They're going to deploy that table. Um, they're going to open a CLI and they're going to import data to that table via the CLI. And yeah, that's a bit of what that, like the first sketch of what that looks like. So um, we are looking at kind of how we can get them in quick. So maybe we can do some kind of ab abstracted single sign-on sort of thing and really strip down UI kind of, do you understand how to create a table? Can you deploy it? Um, and then um, you deploy the table, but you're going to go back to the CLI and then you're going to import stuff into there. Um, so yeah, we assumed, okay, let's test this flow. This is, does this make sense for people? And then we look to two other scenarios. They're creating a project. They're importing from table land. So table land, you can use any table on table land in your project. Um, and then you're going to go back to the CLI. Again, we're testing how big of a part of that is this really. Um, and then going through changing teams, just really kind of basics around try to understand what, what people are after. And then we did another round of research. So again, part of that ideal, but you know, striving towards that, we want to refine, we learn stuff, we had some hypotheses, we proved them or disproved them, um, we validated some thinking, et cetera, et cetera. And we tested some basic conventions like high level organization, could they get around? And most importantly, we wanted to get to blueprints. Now, the reason I mentioned blueprints is because we are interested in templates. You know, we, how can we get people started quickly? And that's always a big thing, you know, kind of zero to one, really. Um, and most things made sense in the previous thing, a bit clunky, but, you know, we'll, we can kind of refine. And we started doing that. And, but then we had this super long user journey, a bit tad, a bit too long, I guess, in this point, that they're going to edit tables, that we're going to do a round trip with the CLI, and then they're going to go deploy and check it again, right? And then so we started tweaking the UI, adding some color, adding some elements. We have blueprints in there now. So we have these templates. They can get started quick. OK, yes, yeah, so again, censorship. People hate our free tables. Um, the tables will still be free and uh, decentralized. Anyway, um, and then you know, you're going to create your schema, do the usual database things that many of you are familiar with. But then you're going to deploy. And we're just trying to test all sorts of things. Notifications, something's going to cost something. Notification, something's been deployed, something is pending. Uh, and then again, there's our friend, the CLI, appearing yet once again in the process. And, and then, you know, bam, right back to it. So the other thing, for instance, we were testing is could you open up the UI from the CLI? So we wanted to test that as well. And then just, you know, kind of another quick one, kind of uh, how do we import stuff? You have a drag and drop zone. You go through, you make your your project and, and we started playing with the navigation. We have all sorts of pending things everywhere. We have toasts. We have all sorts of navigation things uh, happening all of a sudden. Uh, we have search. We, we're adding all these features and we're asking people lots of different things. Does it make more sense basically? And yeah, well, we learned tons. Uh, alerts are great, but they need to be consistent. We weren't necessarily. Um, everything was seen as better than previous, so we kind of kept on tweaking, kept on tweaking, and again, after this, you'll see that it's changed again because we keep on getting feedback in that. <clears throat> favorites, we had favorites at one point, not really that useful, and, and it's, that was one of the key things is that we learned what to chuck away, and blueprints, which was this big bet we had, seemed to be a thing that it made sense, but it wasn't the greatest thing in the world necessarily, but we can do something better, let's say, right? So maybe we should be able to, to duplicate and do things, these sort of GitHub-y actions, I guess you could say. Um, people just need to know different ways of doing things, but a lot of options to do one action isn't helpful. History is important. There's a, a whole slew of things, really, in learning how we can make table land better, in, in particular studio. And so uh, we refined it now, and this is kind of our soft launch in March or, yeah, February, March or so, soft relaunch, I guess, or a Tablesland Studio, and which you can all go to at studio.textile.xyz. Um, and yeah, and I guess one of the big things is, is that we just got rid of templates. So you just can kind of duplicate a thing. And this is important because we talked about it a ton. We just couldn't make it work. 
and the testing said it kind of worked, but not fantastically. So therefore, and it was slightly confusing, and we had to work so much around it, so we just kind of got rid of it, and we're better off for it, I believe. So this is part of kind of the user-centered design as well, too, speaking with users, getting lots of different opinions, and then refining based on that. Um, yeah, and we've simplified the navigation so you can go around before, by the way, the share project thing has to be changed, but hey, um, so you can, now we have environments built in, before there was a bit clunkier of a way of getting around, and now most importantly, it's starting to look like, a, I guess, a proper quote-unquote database application, right, that you have the logs, the schema, which before you always had to click through, we kind of hid that away because it's something you generally do only once. Um, and then we have, you know, all sorts of things that we're still learning, like, so, for instance, the metrics are telling us that the, for the heat maps that actually those cards are a bit large. People aren't really looking at them that much because it's generally something you don't. So we're constantly learning. This is kind of part of that, kind of those loops, that refining, that kind of constant developing. And, and yeah, logs. So we listen to people. We put that stuff in. Um, and, yeah, that's what the schema will look like. Uh, Right, and kind of one of this is one thing I want to highlight is we, we now have a console again. Uh, before all of the studio worked, uh, there was a web console for this and then kind of faded away a bit as we wanted to get started on this. And then, you know, uh, through, through kind of user research, feedback, et cetera, et cetera, we learned, no, we kind of really need this, that, you know, people want to do stuff in one place generally. They might still want the CLI. They can still do everything in the CLI. But the round trip, maybe it's confusing, maybe it's not, but people should have the option to do it all there in one sort of place. So, and again, it's bringing it familiar to, like, anybody's used any sort of database application. Uh, you know, like super base railway, whatever, that, you know, these things are beginning to look familiar. Likewise, editing data right there. This is a pain to do, um, and it's obviously easier for users to do it right there. So we're working on that. This stuff should be out in the next couple of weeks, I think. Um, yeah, just wanted to highlight, so Demo, uh, the Deepin people, uh, they're, they're doing lots of presentations. Uh, we're working with them on, they're using device registries on table end, so that's great. Um, and yeah, and so just uh, quick notes about design for development in general, I guess, uh, is, yeah, like, I'm a designer, and I often work with end users, and developer users, many amongst yourselves, they're not necessarily user users. There's, like, levels and levels of things, knock-on effects, you know, so... And so that you're, it's about making tools and toolboxes and that sort of thing, and of course, there's not a lot of design patterns. Uh, there's, there's a, there is a bit, but not as much as for a kind of consumer level. I guess you could say. And, and yeah, it's all about this kind of the, the CLI, figuring out where that fit, figuring out the processes, and, and just getting away from that like select, 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 submit sort of thinking, which is how most people think of UX in general, right? That we're thinking about toolboxes, not just buttons, you know? Um, and then, of course, you know how our lives are shaped by these libraries and frameworks. Uh, and yeah, of course, where does Web3 and decentralization fit all into this is the wallet connection, which we're tied to generally, but how can we be less? Are there ways around this? Are there ways to work with it? Uh, the metrics told us um, in the first three months that you know people were kind of not connecting wallet, and that went down, but use went up. So what can we infer from that? Maybe it's fine, but people are actually using that. So that's great because people are actually making the data, you know, using, making tables, doing that sort of things, but who knows? And then kind of how do we make this sending transactions that result in paying money, really? So, um, so yeah, so we're, we're learning tons. And like I said, the, the wallet is there, but we're getting people properly using it now, and that's great. Um, and so, yeah, go here, make some tables. Um, and yeah, that's it. Just quick plug. Uh, we just came out with that. <laughs> and that's at basin.textile.io. And that's it. And you can just email me. Easy. Uh, that's it. Thanks. Thanks.